In this video, we're going to look at how we can use something called an ice table to calculate equilibrium concentrations given some information about the equilibrium. So as our first example, what we're going to look at is, is we, we're going to take our prior example where we had uh, the reaction of 2HI gas goes back and forth with H2 gas plus I2 gas. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to take some of that HI gas uh, we're going to start with 0 0.1 moles of HI in a 1 liter container. So already I can tell that my concentration of HI initial is going to equal 0 .1, 0 0.10 moles divided by 1 liter. So that's going to equal 0 0.10 molar. Um, and then it says that at equilibrium, so you, you set this reaction off at a given temperature, and at this particular temperature, the concentration of the H2 at equilibrium, and you'll, you'll notice now that we're going to start to denote things um, with a sort of a nomenclature, and I'll point that out in just a second. But So when we reach equilibrium, we measure the concentration of H2, and we find that it's 0 0.020 molar. So you'll notice now that um, I use a little subscript I for an initial condition, and this is important because, as I showed you, the initial condition has a certain set of things, meaning in, in the initial condition, that's before we reach equilibrium. And then after the reaction has had a chance to react and get to that point where the rate of the forward comes to equal the rate of the reverse, that's when we reach equilibrium. And we denote the equilibrium with a little subscript E. The question is, is what, what is the concentration of HI at equilibrium H2 at equilibrium and I2 at equilibrium. And can we figure that out? And we can. And the way that we're going to do this going forward is we're going to use something called an ice table. Many of you guys will probably remember this from high school. So when you construct an ice table, you take all of your compounds that are in the reaction and we're going to write them across the top. And it doesn't matter what order. But typically, we write them starting with the reactants on the left, and then we work our way over to the products on the right. So you'll notice that I kind of just pulled HI, H2, and I2 in the order that they appear in the reaction. So that's what goes across the top. And if the, re if the reaction has more things, like if it had four things, then there would be four entries across the top. And then so along the side of this, we would have three things. We have initial we have change and we have equilibrium, hence the um, ice, so-called ice, where I stands for initial, C stands for change, and E stands for equilibrium. So we kind of have some things already figured out. Our initial concentration in this case is going to be 0 0.10 molar for the HI. And that was told to us. It said that we start this thing off with 0.1 moles of HI in a 1 liter container, and that's our initial condition. And in this particular instance, it doesn't tell us anything about H2 or I2. Um, we're just like in the last example, we're starting this thing off with only HI. So we're going to put 0 molar and 0 molar for the initial condition there. And these will vary depending on what the problem tells you. If, for example, you had some H2 or I2 at the very beginning and the problem said that, you would include those in the initial condition. But here, the problem doesn't say anything about having any H2 or I2. We're, st we're just starting with some HI in the container and then allowing it to break down into H2 and I2 to reach equilibrium. Now the change is the most important thing. And this is where we're going to bring in the stoichiometry. And here's my advice for when you do the change. We know that from the stoichiometry that for every two moles of HI we're going to produce one mole of H2 and one mole of I2. So Without even knowing an initial condition or anything like that, we, we can sort of create a, some ratios here that for every two of these we use, we're going to make one of these and we're going to make one of these. And we can actually reflect that in this initial condition setup. So in this reaction, we're going to put a minus for the HI. And the reason we put a minus is because products get used up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not products. It, the, in um, reactants get used up. So the concentration of the reactants, if we go back to that graph, if you remember the little graph we had, the HI goes away and we produce H2 and I2. And so that's because reactants, gets con reactants get consumed and products get produced. So we're going to put a minus sign for all of the reactants, and that's because they get consumed. And then we have to look at the stoichiometry. So for every two of these we use up, 
we're going to put 2x here. And we, what we're basically saying here is we, you know, we don't know how much we're going to use. It's just going to be some amount, and it's going to depend on the equilibrium. So we put an x here because we're not sure. And then we're going to work out and try to figure out how we can solve for that x based on some other things. And then so with the h2 and the i2, these ones are going to get pluses. And the reason why they get pluses is because uh, products are being made. So they come in, they grow in from nothing. And based on the stoichiometry, we're going to pull those coefficients here, meaning that for every two of these get used up, we're going to have plus 1x and plus 1x here. And this all comes from the stoichiometry. So when you're doing this, you don't even have to think. You just go to the balanced reaction and you pull the numbers directly from the stoichiometry. You can pull this 2 and mi write minus 2x. 1 minus, a, a, and then you have for a product, you put plus 1x and plus 1x. Those numbers, you don't even have to think about it. You just immediately go to the reaction, pull those numbers in the change, and you'll have the correct change. You just have to make sure that you put minuses for um, reactants and pluses for products. And then in, in equilibrium, we're now going to take our initial condition and we're going to combine it with our change. So we're going to have 0 0.10 molar minus 2x. And then 0 molar plus x is just going to be x. And 0 molar plus x is just going to be x. And so now we know what the relationship will be between all of these various things at equilibrium. So in this particular instance, we get a very, very important piece of information. We know that the concentration of H2 at equilibrium is equal to 0 0.020 molar. And so now we can start to fill that in. So if that is the case, we know that, if the, we know that the concentration of H2 at equilibrium is also equal to x. So we can now say that x is equal to 0 0.020 molar. So if we want to get the concentration of I2, we see that the concentration of I2 at equilibrium is also x. So this is going to be the same, 0 0.020 molar. And that makes sense, because for every one H2 that's produced, one I2 must also be produced. So these things are going to come in at the same rate, and they're going to wind up with the same equilibrium concentrations based on stoichiometry. Now for the HI, we have to get a little bit more complicated, complex. So for the HI at equilibrium, this is going to equal our initial concentration, 0 0.10 molar, minus 2 times x, which was 0 0.020 molar. And the reason for this is because, remember, for every one of these that gets made, we have to take away 2 of the HI. So we're going to subtract away 2 times the amount of H2 and I2 that we produce. And so in this case, we're going to get, um, for that concentration, 0 0.060 molar HI. And that's how you can get that from this information. So in this case, we can use the ice table um, to set these up. And once you have the equilibrium, depending on whether the problem gives you an equilibrium concentration or not, if you can get to here, you can start to do a lot of different things with the um, with with the equilibrium concentrations we could either we could solve for x which we'll see down the road or if you're given some piece of information about what's going on at equilibrium you can use that directly to calculate the other equilibrium concentrations from the ice table okay so let's look at another example just to make sure that we're all on the same page with this so the reaction below is performed with one mole of co and one mole of h2 in a closed container so we're starting with one mole and we're starting with one mole. Now in this case we don't know the volume so but that doesn't matter because you can do this either with molar or with moles because remember these are closed containers they have the same volume so the stoichiometry is going to still work. So whether you're dealing with molar or with moles it should still it should still be it should work just fine these ice tables. So we're starting with one mole of our reactants we let it go and then at equilibrium the mixture is found to contain 0.34 moles of H2 gas. So, and then it says calculate the molar composition of the equilibrium mixture. So what we're doing is, is we're basically taking, we can start to write some things down. So our N initial, our number of moles initial for CO is equal to one mole. And our N initial for H2O is equal to one mole. And so, that's our that that's our initial and for the um, products CO2 and H2 this thing is says that we put one mole of CO and one mole of H2O in a closed container so we're starting with initially zero moles of the CO2 and zero moles of the H2 that's just for this problem if the problem said that you were starting with some amount of those 
then you would have to include that as well. But we're not in this particular problem. And then it says at equilibrium, so N at equilibrium for CO, N at equilibrium for H2O, N at equilibrium for CO2, and N at equilibrium for H2. So we're going to fill in what we what they give us. Uh, so it says that we have, uh, for H2, we have 0 0.34 moles, and the rest we don't know. So that's what we got to figure out. So it says calculate the molar composition of the equilibrium mixture. So we got to figure out how many moles of the other things are there. So let's set up our ice table. So we have CO, H2O, CO2, and H2 on the top. And going down the left side, we have I, C, and E. So we have one mole, one mole, zero moles, and zero moles going across the top. Now, we have to do some stoichiometry here. So we're going to go in and we're going to pull our stoichiometric coefficients. And this one is actually kind of nice. It's just all ones. You know, again, I don't have to think about it. I just go and I look at the stoichiometry because that's already built into the reaction. So I'm going to get minus x, minus x, plus x, and plus x. Remember that the reactants are being consumed and the products are being produced. And then so at equilibrium, we get 1 mole minus x, 1 mole minus x, and then we're going to get x and x. So in this case, um, our H2 is 0 0.34 moles, so we know that because uh, H2 and CO2 are both x, we could say that our concentration of CO2 is going to be 0 0.34 moles. And then for our CO and H2O, it's going to be 1 mole minus 0 0.34 moles, and I get that from 1 mole minus x. And this is going to equal 6, 6 moles of the uh, CO and H2O. And so that's how you can work with these, these, in, these ice tables to kind of get you started. Now, the reason why we're talking about ice tables at this stage is to get you into the mindset that before we even talk about what's going on with the equilibrium, that stoichiometry still makes a difference here. Um, we're doing this first before we do we even talk about, you know, the relative ratios of products and reactants because what's most important when you start this is that these things don't come out of these concentrations at equilibrium don't come out of nowhere. They're based on the stoichiometry, and that's where the ice table comes in. The ice table allows us to incorporate stoichiometry into equilibrium. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the equilibrium constant, and we're going to look at how we can start to figure out um, whether these reactions favor the forward, favor the reverse, and how we can tell.